What is up my friends? I hope that you've all had a wonderful day. Thank you so much for coming to join me. But we have a lot to discuss. We're going to be speaking about the search for Liverpool's next manager, the race for Ruben Amaram's signature. Barca want him, we want him, many other clubs want him. We're going to give you the latest lowdown on where we're at. We're going to be speaking about an appointment to Liverpool Football Club from, uh, well, I guess a, a sporting uh, announcement. Not so much a player or anything, but we're going to be talking about somebody the club are bringing in from Benfica. We'll give you the appointments for the referees for the game against Manchester United this weekend. And of course, lots of other bits and pieces. I uh, just want to clear a couple of things up. Firstly, let me just say it is World Autism Day today and we are going to try and play our part in some small way to just let people know why we celebrate World Autism Day. We're also going to be asking you guys for your thoughts on team selection ahead of the game against Sheffield United. I put the preview out earlier on today. Hope you've had a chance to watch it. Would love to know your thoughts on my predicted 11 and a few other bits and pieces. Uh, Vidor straight away said Nagelsmann is better in my opinion well we'll get into that my friend and we'll of course ask you for your thoughts on Julian Nagelsmann uh, I don't see Nagelsmann as a great fit for Liverpool but he is definitely worth considering it for the manager's job he uh, he deserves that at least so what else have we got to go through tonight? Well, as I said, we're going to be giving you the latest on the Ruben Amram situation. We're going to be speaking about a couple of outsiders for the job. One manager who's apparently fallen away from favouritism at Liverpool. A little bit on Michael Owen and Jabby Alonso. Uh, Carvalho and a few other bits and pieces, yes. So loads to get through tonight. Now, I want to just start off by saying... Yesterday, when I recorded the video and I said Jabby Alonso called a coward... I just want to again point out for those that maybe didn't watch the video and just commented. It wasn't me calling him a coward. It was Richard Keyes that went with the coward phrase. When I said I agree, I meant that I agree it's the wrong decision and that I think he'll regret it. But uh, I hope that cleared it up. So I do apologise if anybody thought that I was calling Alonso a coward. But as I've said, maybe watch the video sometimes before commenting or being quick to judge. Because I made it very clear in the video that it wasn't me saying it. Uh, as a fellow autistic person, love to see the signs at Casper's photography. Well, thank you, Casper. And look, people often say, why do we celebrate World Autism Day? Well, I've gone straight to the source to find out exactly why and, and word it far better than I could. It says, World Autism Day is a time to come together to promote understanding, acceptance and inclusion. By recognising the diversity of autism and embracing the strengths and abilities of individuals on the spectrum, we can create a more compassionate and supportive world for everyone. I've mentioned this a couple of times before. I myself am on the autism spectrum. I have Asperger's. My son Lucas is also on the spectrum. So it's it's great to see the uh, awareness of autism being raised around the world. I have to admit, before autism came into our lives, I didn't really know too much about it myself. So don't feel bad if if there's any questions you want to ask or there's anything you don't understand. It is an all uh, an, an ever expanding thing, autism, and that's it's called the spectrum for a reason because no two people are identical, and everybody will have different things that we can perhaps do to make their lives that bit more enjoyable. And any questions, pop it in. But today is World Autism Day, so we want to play our small little part here on the channel to help try to raise some awareness. Right, Casper's Photography, thank you for your super chat, my man, appreciate it. So right, what do we want to start off with tonight? We can talk about the Ruben Amram situation, or we can talk about some of the managers that are perhaps being ruled out of the Liverpool job. Uh, mainly Roberto De Zerbi, who, as per reports today from quite a few people, he's falling down the list of uh, priorities, I guess, for Liverpool Football Club. It, it looks like he's going to be the one, maybe, that Bayern Munich are looking to appoint as their next coach. Um, a report here today from Bert of the Telegraph said, Liverpool have cooled their interest in Brighton manager Roberto De Zerbi. If you go into uh, to Florian Plettenberg's post as well, he's speaking about the fact that De Zerbi is a really strong candidate for the Bayern job. I think Barcelona may also have some interest in him, but it's no surprise to me that he's not at the top of Liverpool's list. He's a great coach, no denying that. But I just don't think he's a good fit for Liverpool Football Club. Some people don't understand when I talk about a good fit. But what I mean by that is Liverpool Football Club's managerial job is a little bit different. You have to obviously be qualified. You have to you have to strike a chord with the fan base in the city. And Deserby to me just doesn't strike me as that type of guy. Great coach. Really innovative coach. And Pep Guardiola described him as one of the most influential coaches currently playing their trade in world football. But for me, I don't know, I've never been sold on the idea of De Zerbi as Liverpool's coach. 
Uh, Michael Manning said, I have nephews, two nephews with autism. Well, much love to them, Michael. And uh, I'm sure that you're, you've done your part to try and uh, inform yourself as much as possible. Do you think the Liverpool will beat Manchester United? Yes, I do. And on that, it's like the, the PGMOL are taunting us, right? So the appointments for the Manchester United game, the refereeing appointments have been confirmed now. Anthony Taylor will be the referee. Now, just so you understand why I and many others would be a little bit concerned by this, Anthony Taylor is one of, I think, four or five greater Manchester area referees that are appointed to games. And although he's an Altrincham fan, it doesn't sit right with me that we have referees like Anthony Taylor, who grew up in an era of Manchester United dominance in that part of the UK, refereeing our games against Manchester United. It just doesn't sit well with me, and I'm sure to many other people. So Anthony Taylor is the referee. His assistants are going to be Gary Beswick and Adam Nunn. And the fourth official for the game is Craig Pawson with John Brooks on VAR. So there you go. Once again, the PGMOL have decided that when we play Manchester United in Manchester, the best thing to do is to put a greater Manchester referee in charge. I mean, what could possibly go wrong there? It's crazy. And loads of people have been contacting me over the past couple of days to look at the contrast of the way the referees refereed the Manchester City Arsenal game versus how David Coote refereed Liverpool against Brighton. The Pretty much the exact same number of fouls in both games, but one game was refereed with a load of yellow cards. I'll let you figure out which one that is. Hint, it's our one. And the other game, very few yellow cards in it with the same numbers of fouls. Again, you know, I'll leave it up to your good selves to make your own mind up, but they're not doing us any favours. I think that's that's the most fair way I can describe this. The PGMOL are not doing us any favours. Taylor's the fourth official for the Sheffield United game as well, said Mark. Thank you, Mark. I actually forgot to check the officials for the Sheffield United game, buddy. That's on me, though. So, yeah, look, to me... I feel like if we win the league title, we're going to have to do it in spite of the referees. And I'm sure you'll probably agree on that one. Um, I want to thank you all again for coming in and joining us tonight. It means a lot to us. Uh, Harry Klein said, my brother has autism. Love to see awareness. My brother ran round in an Endomania shirt today. He calls him the Japanese Milner, the Samurai Machine. Love that, Harry. And please do pass on our best wishes to your bro. And I hope that he, uh, hope that he enjoys the games coming up over the next few days. Uh, endomania i love it well in harry jc thank you buddy jc gavin Hill's popped in and gifted five anfield agenda memberships absolute legend as always jc thank you right mark has just sent me on the appointments there thank you mark so the referee for our game on thursday is Stuart atwell now for those of you who aren't aware you need to be worried because Stuart atwell paul tierney and david Koo would be three of the most Horrendous referees to appoint, be appointed to a Liverpool game, in my opinion. So Stuart Atwell's the referee. His assistants are James Mainwaring and Richard West. Fourth official, Anthony Taylor. VAR for the game is going to be Chris Kavanagh. So they're the appointments for the referees. We shouldn't even have to know about these things, by the way. I hate that as football fans, we have to look at this and worry. We should be just... They should be just... Uh, a footnote in the game. But, I don't know. It just... They're not doing us favours. I can only come back to the same thing. Uh, Stargirl, thank you for your super chat. You're very, very kind. Said, it seems the Zerbi is out. It's now between Amarum and Nagelsman. Autism Day is a great idea to improve understanding and help remove associated stigma. Again, worded very well. And uh, thank you for your contribution and thank you for your kindness as well around World Autism Day. I have to say, like before autism became part of our family's life, because I was only diagnosed at 35, I didn't understand a lot of the, the symptoms or what to look out for. I mean, I think it's fair to say we've all been in a shopping center or out somewhere where you've seen a kid have a bit of a meltdown and they start shouting. And I used to think that that was just perhaps a bold child or a child who was misbehaving. I didn't understand the sensory issues that were attached uh, or, or that impact people on the spectrum at that point in my life. So when I became aware of that, I started to, I started to judge less. I've got to be honest, I mean, I used to look at some of these kids and I used to think they're just being bold. They just misbehave and I didn't know it was my own ignorance. So, yeah, these type of things I think we can all learn a little bit as we go along. And um, on the day that's in it, April the 2nd, it is 
a small thing that we can do to just try and help raise awareness. Uh, best of luck goes... What? Bit of luck he goes to Barca. Better managers Liverpool should be going after, said Richard Miss Candelin. Uh, I very, very much disagree, Richard. Um, I mean, feel free to throw some names out there of better managers you think. I mean, if you look into Amarum, you will see why he's so highly regarded. You will see why Sporting Lisbon paid a, a 10 million euro fee to get him from Braga to Sporting, where he delivered their first league title in 19 years. And he's on course to deliver another league title this year. So I disagree on there being better coaches out there. Xabi Alonso would have been top of most of our lists, I think. But once he ruled himself out, it became pretty clear that it was going to be Amaram, Nagelsmann and maybe a few outsiders. But I, I disagree, mate. You know, you're entitled to your own opinion. Of course you are. But I disagree with you on there being a lot better coaches. I think he'll be a good fit. But we have to wait and see what happens. So let me just read you through some of the media post from today around Amram and the situation. So Miguel Delaney of the Independent said, Barcelona are rushing to secure the services of Ruben Amram. The Alonso decision has changed the market and Amram is currently a top target for a number of clubs. Barcelona had been the favourites, but nothing is agreed yet. Now, just to go back to our friend a moment ago who was speaking about there being a lot of better coaches or managers out there, as I mentioned, lots of clubs are looking to bring in Ruben Amaram and for good reason. Um, it feels a bit weird though. At the moment, looking around the landscape of managers, it, it, I keep using the phrase changing of the guard because I can't think of a better one. But it does feel like Pep, Klopp, Mourinho, Ancelotti, Conte perhaps, that era of manager, I'm not saying they're coming to an end, but there's a new young crop of coaches, uh, the likes of Amaram, Nagelsmann, uh, many others as well that we could speak about who are coming through Jabby Alonso, um, Graham Potter, I guess you could, Eddie Howe, that are coming through that will be the next big thing. And that's what they're trying to do here. All the clubs are trying to figure out who's going to be that next Mourinho, that next Pep, that next Klopp. And it is somewhat of a guessing game. You're right. You can only mitigate these decisions so much, but ultimately somebody's going to have to take a chance and see how it works out, and there's no guarantees. I'm not going to sit here and say if Ruben Amram comes in, we're guaranteed to win league titles. I don't know that. But I certainly feel like it's an exciting uh, potential appointment. Uh, Craig, did you organise to change the time in the UK and Ireland? that suits me much better. I wish I had that type of sway, mate, but no, unfortunately the clocks, uh, the clocks did go forward. Someone's saying the clock is wrong. That's No, it's not. Clock says A44. That's spot on. So the clock isn't wrong. Clock's absolutely spot on. A44 is the correct time. Clocks went forward an hour. Uh, Craig, did you see Darren McAnthony saying the manager could manage top six club? Yeah, I'll move on to talk about that now in a second. So, Darren McAnthony, Peter United chairman and Liverpool fan, has said that Kieran McKenna is a top six manager in the making and he sees him as a potential dark horse to replace Jurgen Klopp. I've not really heard many links to um, Kieran McKenna for Liverpool, but I have seen Kieran McKenna's name come up amongst Manchester United fans and amongst their uh, search for a potential coach down the line. So I don't think he will be considered uh, for this this time for the Liverpool job, but I do think Kieran McKenna, as Darren McAnthony said, is destined for great things. And um, as I said, United are a club that I've seen mentioned with him. So I'm not personally aware of any interest from Liverpool, but Darren McAnthony will be far better connected than I am, in all honesty. Is there a referee which at least decent in some way in the league on every or is everyone bad? So honestly, I feel like this is probably the worst era of referees that I can remember in the Premier League. And what makes it even more galling is the fact that they've got more technology available to them than ever before. And the mistakes still seem to be creeping in. Just look at Vincent Company's words after um, the recent Burnley game. He said... Again, referees this year just have not been good enough whatsoever. And I, I don't disagree with them. There's a fine stretch in the evenings, Craig. So there is. Oh, sure, sure. There surely is, Jack. There surely is. I do like it, though. I do like the clocks going forward now. We've got that decent spell of weather. So I've got a couple of things that I wanted to read out to you. 
And the first one comes from Michael Owen. And the video I made yesterday, which I touched on at the start of the stream, where Richard Keyes was basically saying that Alonso was cowardly for not choosing the Liverpool job. I want to just follow on with some comments from Michael Owen around the same situation. And this is what he's had to say about Xabi Alonso uh, turning down the opportunity to manage Liverpool. He said, with all due respect, it's incredible what Leverkusen are doing at the moment, but they're not going to win the Champions League or be one of Europe's elite. The thing is in life, certainly in football, you can have all these best made plans and then comes the unexpected. Uh, I look at my own career and thought I was going to play for whoever and all of a sudden you're offered something else and you think it might never come around again. When Real Madrid asked me to play for them, I knew it was go I was never going to be asked again. So what was I going to do? He thinks it was a mistake as well for Xabi Alonso to turn down the opportunity to manage Liverpool. And I can't say I disagree. Look, I understand and respect Xabi Alonso's um, respect for Leverkusen and for the job not being completed there. But as Michael Owen has said, and as Richard Key said, I hate agreeing with Keyes, by the way. But as he said, these jobs don't come around all that often, particularly the Liverpool job. And I don't know if we'll ever be in a better position that Alonso would suit as much as he did right now. But it was his choice to make. We have to respect that choice. But it doesn't mean we have to agree with it, right? And I very much do disagree. I think Alonso's made the incorrect decision. But I would say that because I'm a Liverpool fan. Inzaghi would be perfect and he can learn English. Well, Jack, you'll probably be happy to know. Today was the first day that I did actually hear something about Inzaghi. Um... I'm not sure if it'll follow on to anything more serious, but there was an article put out today that said he is under consideration. He is one of the names that are being looked at. Um, obviously, during his time in Italy, he's done quite well and is doing well again. So I'm not going to sit here and profess I know as much about Nzaghi. I don't. I don't even know what style of football he plays. I don't know what way he sets his teams up. So I'm more than happy for you guys to fill me in on why you think Nzaghi would potentially be a good choice for Liverpool. But as you said, Jack, he probably would have to learn English. That would be... Uh, something you'd imagine you'd have to get sorted. Uh, I don't see us getting Amram with Barcelona in the race as well. Why is it, Jake? I, I, I understand where you're coming from, but I'm going to just pose a question back to you. Why do we have this self-defeatist attitude at times? Like, Liverpool Football Club is a far bigger football club than Barcelona. Now, you're probably going to come back to me and go, you what now? We are. Barcelona's success has only really been in the last 20 years or so. Um, they've had minor successes before that, but they only became the super club that they have been over the last 20 years. And they're in serious financial peril at the minute. I take to that, add on top of that, the Super League stuff as well. The fact that any manager coming in there is going to have to work with a very restricted budget. And yes, it will be appealing to Ruben Amaro. It's Barcelona still at the end of the day. But don't be so... Defeatist about our opportunities. Liverpool is a huge club, mate. A huge club. And Ruben Amorum will make up his own mind. And I'm not going to sit here and say to you he'll absolutely tell Barcelona to do one. I don't know the answer to that. But we're still a huge club. Don't underestimate how much pulling power Liverpool has. Uh, Craig, what's your thoughts on Liverpool 11 against Sheffield United? I thought the club would make changes in the team. Um... So I did my preview earlier on. Really quickly, my 11 was Kelleher, Costas at left back, Bradley at right back, Canada and Verge as the centre backs. In midfield, I was thinking about just one change. So I went for Endo, McAllister and Gravenberg. Up top, I didn't change anything. Lucho, Salah and Darwin. Um, but I do understand if somebody else wants to make changes because obviously we've had more of a rest between Brighton and Sheffield United than we will have between Sheffield United and Manchester United. So we play Thursday, Sunday. So perhaps we do go a little bit weaker. Um, some people have suggested maybe he plays Cody Gakbo instead of Darwin Nunes to make sure Darwin's rested up for the weekend. Truth is, it's difficult to know because Jurgen has a lot to navigate at the minute. Players coming back from injury, players playing a lot of games. And the game's coming thick and fast now. You're talking three games over the course of seven days. So there probably will be some changes. But I still, I still think it's important we go strong. Because one, we can't slip up here. We have to make sure we get the points. And also, it's an opportunity to increase our goal difference. So um, I've gone for a 4-0 score prediction as well. I'm feeling really optimistic ahead of the game. Because Sheffield United are one of the poorest teams I've ever seen in the Premier League. But it's still the Premier League. And we still have to 
go into the game and uh, show them respect and not think we just need to show up and get the win. Uh, Barcelona could also lose some players in the summer, said Mario Nagori. Absolutely. And I'm sure that they will. Um, they have to free up some money in the summer. There's no doubt about that. They'll have to chop down their wage bill as well. Uh, but Liverpool have moved to make one appointment today. And I wanted to just talk about this for a second because uh, regular viewers will know that we spoke about this guy before. But today Liverpool have confirmed that they're going to hire Pedro Marquez, who was the Benfica technical director. Now, the Echo have a good piece on this where they say, who is Pedro Marquez? And they break down um, why Liverpool would look at him, what he may bring to the club and what we could expect. And this is what they've written. Marquez began his career as a youth coach at Sporting in 2004, advancing through the industry. Six years later, he took up a position as a performance analyst with Manchester City. At the same time, former Liverpool Sporting Director Julian Ward was a scout for Manchester City. So that's when their paths first crossed. He then moved into a coaching and analysis lead position with the City Football Group in 2014 making his first steps into working as part of a multi-club model so you can already see with the remit for Michael Edwards being to find FSG another club why we're starting to bring in more people into the fold so Richard Hughes will be our sporting director we don't yet know what Pedro Marquez role is going to be but as I'm going to continue to read on you can see that he has been part of a multi-club model before so obviously uh, has a good understanding of what it's going to take he said, instead of just City, he helped to oversee three other clubs. The group bought shares and acquired ownership in, in 2014, New York City, Melbourne City and Yokohama Marinos. By the time he departed the City Football Group in 2018, they had stakes in six clubs across the globe. Since then, he's worked for Benfica as the Youth Technical Director. In 2022, he was involved in the discussions that resulted in the £64 million rising to £85 million transfer of Darwin Nunes with Den Red Sporting Director Julian Ward on the opposite end of the line. It seems that the more I look into this, the more that I get to know about the footballing world, it's quite a small world really and relationships are important. Uh, Richard Hughes has spoken before about relationships with agents being key. Michael Edwards said the same thing to Jamie Carragher when Carragher went to visit him before. It is about the relationships that you have with those agents and that's why we're starting to bring in the likes of Pedro Marquez, obviously Richard Hughes, Michael Edwards back again to start to build up Liverpool Football Club in the world of multi-club ownership. Uh, Craig, my mate said to me today, Chelsea are also looking at Amram. Have you heard anything on that? Yes, I have. Um, and Chelsea are indeed casting their eye over Ruben Amram. But really, if you're any manager now, like I'll sit here and say to you, Barcelona job, that's appealing, even with the financial restraints. But honestly, Chelsea are a bit of a laughing stock right now. The club's all over the place. The ownership situation's up and down. Uh, they may have to sell a load of players to, to sort FFP out. They could face a points deduction. It's just not a very appealing job for a manager right now. So whatever concerns you may have over Barcelona and Ruben Amram, I certainly wouldn't be too concerned over Chelsea and uh, Amram. I mean, would you go there if you were a coach? Let me just say it. Uh, Inzaghi will be perfect and he can learn English at Jack Howe. We've already gone through that one. I think somebody said I missed another super chat, so I'm scrolling up. Uh, Stargirl said, no, we've done that one already. I don't think I have missed the super chat. I think there's a comment here from Avani that said, one year as a member, including Twitch subscription. I think Amram was definitely number one, but we also need to think about Nargelsman. He was fired prematurely. Well, very interestingly, the two leading candidates for the Bayern Munich job are Ruben Amor, or no, excuse me, are Roberto De Zerbi and Julian Nagelsmann. The Julian Nagelsmann that they fired previously. So it looks like we're, going, we're not going to face competition from Bayern for Amram by the looks of it. They're going for either De Zerbi or Nagelsmann. Uh, and I agree, Nagelsmann should be under consideration for us. He should be one of the people we're looking at. I've, I've no argument about that whatsoever. Um, but he Again, like I've said before, for me, falls further down the list. Right. Something really quickly that I can announce today. We have confirmed four live shows. The first two shows and the shows that are going to be going on sale very soon are Belfast and Dublin. You're looking at Belfast being May 31st. 
Dublin, June 2nd. The tickets for the show should go on sale later this week. Uh, I'll give you more information as and when I have them. We've also confirmed two shows in the UK for August. August the 2nd, we're going to be in Cardiff. August the 4th, we're going to be in Liverpool. So they are four shows we have finally confirmed and booked in. And I'll give you uh, information on ticketing and stuff like that as and when I get more of it. But I just wanted to give you guys a heads up first of all. We finally finished booking those four shows and they are all good to go. Any questions, please do feel free to throw them into the chat. Uh, Chelsea might be in a different league next year, said Stargirl. We can but hope, my friend, we can but hope. They really are a mess right now, aren't they? Um, so the Anfield Talk posted about Fabio Carvalho and he said Fabio Carvalho has scored five goals in 13 games since signing for Hull City on loan. Do you think he has a place in our squad next season for the new manager? And it's an interesting post and I'd love to know your thoughts on it. Maybe we can get a poll on this actually. One second. Feels like the easiest way to discuss this. Right, so the easiest way that I could word it was, does Carvalho have a career still at Liverpool? Yes or no? So I'll leave that up and you guys can vote away. It is an interesting one. I think the chance that Jurgen Klopp has moved on probably does increase Carvalho's potential to, uh, to come back to the club. Because both the managers or any of the managers that we'd looked at, they do seemingly play with number 10s in their system more so than Jürgen did. So perhaps that would lead to the possibility of Fabio Carvalho coming back. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I do agree with, with Klopp moving on. I think his chances probably increase a bit. Uh, Jack said, if Amram rejects us for Barca, I'd start to worry something is really wrong with what FSG are offering to these guys in terms of tools and funds. I think that's fair, Jack. Um, Alonso was one situation. Fair enough. Everybody lost out on Alonso. Bayer Leverkusen kept their coach. And Bayern, uh, ourselves, and anybody else lost out on him. But you're right, mate. If the second person on that list then chooses to go elsewhere, I think it is a concern. Definitely. Um, but I'm not at the point where I'm concerned yet because nothing is being confirmed as regards to Barca, us, or somebody else so I think it's a fair point you've raised though um the idea of a manager coming in that has to work with a limited budget does worry me because if you look at one of the reasons why Ruben Amram was so highly regarded by FSG was that he did punch above his weight he did deliver a league title to Sporting with a smaller budget than Benfica and Porto and in some ways, yes, that must be an attractive thing for an owner. But in another way, you do kind of want the new manager to have funds to be able to compete because City aren't going to stand still. United won't stand still. Spurs won't stand still. Arsenal won't stand still. So, yeah, I get the concern. Um, and I just hope that... Well, you know what? I'm going to be honest. If you ask me what I think is going to happen, I think, like I've said before... Some of the funding for Amorim uh, to act in the transfer market will come from the sale of Mohamed Salah. That's one of the things that I, I have to be honest about. That's what I think will happen. We'll sell him and that money will be given to the manager to go and spend on um, areas of the squad that he thinks need attention. Who would be your top priority on the contract situation? It's a great question, Joshua. Thank you, mate. Great question. Um, oh... I think they're all time sensitive. You know, we've got Trent, Verge and Mo, and I think that's who you're talking about. They're the ones that have one year to go at the end of this season. The likes of Joel Matip, Thiago Alcantara, I don't expect them to get new deals. I think their contracts expire in the summer. We'll say thank you and uh, wish them all the best. But of the three you've mentioned, personally, and I'm only going for me, I want Mo first. I want to know that situation. I want to know if Mo is going to be offered a new deal or if Liverpool are going to be looking to sell. Uh, Trent, well, you have Real Madrid sniffing around. We can't just take for granted that Trent's a local boy and assume he's going to just stay at Liverpool. You know, I'm old enough to remember the Steven Gerrard situation with Chelsea where he said, like, he basically wasn't feeling the love. He didn't feel like Liverpool wanted him to stay and they weren't fighting hard enough. And I hope we don't uh, make the same mistake with Trent. So, for me, Trent 
is one that we have to get done because he's coming into his prime now, 25, already had a story career with us, local boy, vice captain. So uh, him, I think. Then Verge. Verge is the one that I find the most intriguing because common sense would say he's our captain. He's been brilliant this season. Give him a new deal. But we can't just ignore that he's 32 as well. And when you hear that Michael Edwards is less likely to look to hand out contracts to players in their early to mid-30s compared to Jürgen, I, I really don't know the answer. But I hope common sense comes through and Verge gets a new deal, Trent gets a new deal, and whatever happens at Mo will happen. Um, but it'd be madness if we lost Verge or Trent. But great question, and thank you, Joshua. Uh, I just joined. What did I miss about Amaram? Not too much, but we will go back over it, my man. So don't worry about that. And thank you for gifting five memberships as well, Ace and Tino. You're very kind. If you could get Mo for 400 grand a week, would you do it? Yes, I would. So... I am backtracking a little bit here because I have said before that I wouldn't look to give him a pay rise, but he probably earns about a million quid a week all in, according to, you know, his own representative. And his base salary is about 350. So, I mean, 400 grand versus 350, it's not enough to break the bank. So if it was that or lose him, I'd give him the 400 grand, yes. I mean, I think we all agree. Salah could play for another two, three, four years. It's just a matter of if we can make the proposal attractive enough to him or if he has plans to move on elsewhere. Or maybe just Michael Edwards just feel like, hey, this is the time to sell. We've had six, seven years great service from Mo. We're never going to get a better chance to cash in. So there is that as well. Um, and as much as we're attached emotionally to these things, one of the things Michael Edwards was brought in for was, of course, the ability to um, remove emotion from decision making. But I feel like he's going to be sold. That's truly, if I was to put 50 quid down now, I feel like he's going to be sold. Uh, I could see VVD staying, especially with the captain's role factor and becoming a mentor, not just for the locker room, but for the up-and-coming centre-backs too, said the Faceman Network. Um, Stargirl said, Craig, I actually don't mind, even though you could uh, get lots of money for Salah. I wouldn't mind him finishing his playing career with us uh, and go through the new coaching system with the new clubs we're buying. I'm with you. I, I Look, I hope most days at the club, you know, he's still delivering. Um, and even if his best days are behind him, which I think they are, I think centrally he could still do a job. His assisting and passing has been very good over the past couple of seasons. But it's interesting you speak, to, you, speak you spoke about um, Virgil van Dijk because... Jamie Carragher was speaking to Trent about the situation of um, of Jurgen Klopp telling them that he was going to be the partner at the end of the season and Trent's answer was actually very interesting. So Carragher said, has wanting to end this era on a high for Jurgen and everything he's done for the club been a topic of conversation in the dressing room? And Trent replied, 100%. That was something that Virgil van Dijk said to us all after Jurgen had told us. He said, this is huge news that's going to rock the footballing world but we can't let it distract us. We have to use it as a motivation. The manager has led us to so much success. He's enabled us to fulfill our dreams. So we owe it to him to give everything we possibly can and give him the best send off. Verd said that if people think this is going to make us take our eye off the ball, then we need to prove them wrong. It was big news, but as professionals, you have to get your head around it quickly and move on. Spot on again. And I think they will. And I think they have. We've been... Going through the well, digging deep so many times this season and always found an answer. Right now, as I sit here talking to you, we are top of the Premier League and it's in our own hands. And if we keep winning, there's nothing anybody else can do about it. We don't have to play Arsenal again. We don't have to play City again. So right now, as a Liverpool fan, I'm thinking win on Thursday and win on Sunday and that's it. Statement made. I think we do it from there. But... I've probably learned my lesson about being cocky going to Old Trafford. I thought we were going to wipe the floor with them in the FA Cup game. We should have, but we didn't. And they made us pay for it. We can't let that happen again on Sunday. It's huge. If we can go to Old Trafford and win, that sends a message. And I think it only 
intensifies my belief that we'd be favourites to go and win the league. Salah's best days won't be behind him. I think next season Salah will be more like 21-22. No, his best days are 100% behind him. They are. I mean, there's no arguing that. Metr- any metric you want to look at, he's dropped off a little bit on. But it doesn't mean he still hasn't got an amazing future ahead of him. Um, the first year he came in, we haven't seen those numbers replicated. But what we have seen is seven consistent seasons of 20-plus goals. But look, he isn't as fast as he once was. Um, I think his game intelligence has probably changed and grown over the years. And sometimes as players get a little bit older, they they tend to not rely on pace or explosiveness so much as they do their experience of understanding um, how to best conserve and use their energy. So whilst I do think, and I will stand firmly on my point that I think his best years are behind him, it doesn't mean that I don't think he can have a massive impact in a positive way. He can, but you know, it's only because I hold him in such high regard that I think that, because I'm talking about your Leo Messi's, your Cristiano Ronaldo's here, players who, as they moved into their um, mid-30s, almost reinvented themselves in some ways. That's how highly I rate Mo. I think he's in that calibre. Uh, Craig Fabrizio has posted that Lindelof and Martinez are out for Sunday. Big boost for us. Yeah, look... I'm confident ahead of Sunday, but at the end of the day, we've got to go out there and get that result. If we win on Sunday and backed it up with the win on Thursday, that's nine points from nine over the last three games. And I don't see us letting it slip at that point. I don't. I think if we beat United on Sunday, I'm arrogantly going to say we're going to win the league. Uh, Craig, Amram has the same agent as Luis Diaz, so we have a good chance of getting him. I didn't know that. Thank you. That's a great bit of information. I appreciate you sharing that with us. Uh, Genuinely didn't know that, so yeah. It is mad how small the footballing world is, though, behind the scenes. like it's uh, For such a a huge multinational business, it's a handful of these agents and representatives that take care of uh, the careers of a lot of the top talent. So yeah, it's uh, interesting to know that, and thank you again. Uh, Rob Wilson, appreciate you, bud, joining Anfield Agenda Ultras. Thank you so much. Really do appreciate that. I want to give a little special shout out as well to George. If you're watching, I believe you'll probably be having a cup of tea in your Benador mug, sir. If you are watching, George, just want to say a huge thank you to you, mate, for your support of the channel. Uh, I hope that you're in good spirits. And um, yeah, thank you for watching, George. It means a lot to us. Thank you. Right, Craig, how do you think the club are keeping the young lads composed during the title race? So, weirdly, with youngsters, also comes arrogance, in a good way, because they've no fear. We often think of youngsters as being naive on a football pitch or whatever, but I've often spoke to you about the petulance of youth before, and I think Connor Bradley is a great example of that. Nothing about that young man right now makes it look like he's overawed by the occasion or struggling with uh, playing in a team that are pushing for the Premier League title. So, I think... The experience of the likes of Verge and Salah and Allison and those senior pros mixed with that energy and excitement and hunger of the of youth, I think it's a good combo. Um, and I think it will... Look, you don't get to play for Liverpool Football Club if you suffer with the nerves or if you can't live up to the occasion. If you're out there playing for Jurgen Klopp and he trusts you that much, like Conor Bradley, you've got something about you, so... I think we harness that energy in a good way. Uh, this season has been one of the craziest seasons. Went from Mbappe train to manager search. Morganski, you're right, mate. It's been a real emotional roller coaster. At no point did I think we were going to hear that Jurgen Klopp was going to be leaving us in the summer. I'm still getting my head around that. That's the biggest news of all to me. Um and then, as you've said, we had the whole Mbappe stuff, the Bellingham stuff before that, then the Jabi stuff. So I'm trying to just uh, take it one day at a time and not take anything for granted now because, you know, I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, it's going to be Amram, 100% it's going to be Amram because, as we've seen in football, mate, things can change very, very quickly. But it does feel like there is a lot of positivity behind the Amram situation. 
Who do you think will have a better career, Kwanzaa or Bradley? It's so difficult to say because, one, I hope both of their careers are the exact same because I hope they both stay and play with Liverpool for another decade minimum. So in that way, it's hard to differentiate between them. But, you know, they're both outstanding young footballers and um, a credit to our academy system as well for bringing them through and getting them to the level they're at. And we're seeing the benefit of that right now. And that's another reason, by the way, that FSG are so impressed and Michael Edwards is so impressed with Ruben Amaram is that he puts his faith in youth. If you look at some of the players he brought through at Sporting or you speak to people who've worked alongside him, that's something that he said as well. Um, he believes in youth. He believes in bringing those players through. And in the days where football transfer fees are becoming absolutely ludicrous and we see players like Enzo Fernandez going for 105 million or uh, Declan Rice 115 million, Mois Caicedo, or sorry, Declan Rice 100 million, Mois Caicedo 115 million. If you can bring somebody through from your academy that maybe cost you half a million or a million quid to bring into the club, that is, I mean, an owner's wet dream, for want of a better phrase. And also for us as fans, there's something... There's something extra special about an academy product coming through, uh, especially if they're an academy product who's a local boy like Trent. But if you can bring through academy players, that is that's setting you up in a good way, a good way financially and, of course, a good sustainable way. It also really helps you attract those good young players because if there's a pathway through, their parents or those who represent them are more likely going to steer them in the direction of a club like Liverpool that have a proven pathway. Look at Dortmund and look at what they've been able to to achieve being able to, you know, kind of hoover up a lot of that young talent, you know, bringing Haaland through, Bellingham through, players that many clubs in Europe were fighting to sign, but Dortmund were able to say, look, we have a history of bringing through Jaden Sancho's, Jude Bellingham's, Erling Braut Haaland's, um, and we're heading in that direction as well. So I think it's all good. Uh, Klopp has always said he'd leave the club if the owners went ahead with a behind-the-scenes documentary. I think you're you're picking that up a little bit wrong, George. I think if it was a an fly, a fly on the wall Amazon series that was going to be there throughout the entire season, I think he said, yeah, he wouldn't have put up at that. But I think when Jurgen announced that he was going to depart uh, and it was put to them the project, I think. It softened up a little bit for Klopp that he was able to document the last days of his job. And I think a lot of this documentary as well is going to be about players, their home lives um, and the whole family of Liverpool Football Club rather than just honing in on an all or nothing type uh, documentary that we've seen with Arsenal Man City. Harry, thank you again for your super chat, mate. Really appreciate it. Uh, do we need to spend 80 million for another VVD or is Kwanzaa that guy? I think he'll be that guy. He's so composed. The sky's the limit. So, one, I agree on Kwanzaa. Going to save us an absolute fortune. But I do think we need to spend relatively big on a centre-back. Whether that's Diamande, whether that's Inacio. Whether we visit and try to get Levi Colwell out of Chelsea. Whether we go completely right field and try and get Branthway from Everton, I don't know. But I think we will see Liverpool spend between 50 and 60 million on a centre-back in the summer window. Because we need to. If Ruben Amorim comes in and wants to play his preferred system, we need three centre-backs. Um, and I was only thinking to myself the other day, imagine a world where you had like Inacio on the left, Van Dijk in the middle, Canade on the right, with Gomez and Kwanzaa as options as cover and maybe Seb van den Berg coming back that works well and another thing that um Ruben Amram loves with the center backs is that they have to be ball playing center backs who can carry the ball upfield and you know make it uh make it easier to thread balls through to midfield and to link up with the lone striker in a system and the two number 10s but he does like ball playing ball carrying center backs Uh, Christopher said just finished work have I missed anything uh, nothing too dramatic buddy we will go back through everything anyways but if you've any specific questions bro feel free to throw them into the chat and I'll do my best to get to them um, Pro said what do you think we should aim for next season since there will be a new coach uh, what are the new Amram news so 
First part of your question, what should we aim for next season? I think that's a question a lot of us are asking ourselves. Because if Klopp was still here, we'd be talking about wanting to win another league title. But is it fair to put that expectation on the new coach coming in? Probably yes and no. For me, if we're challenging, if we're in the top two or three, and we're not a million miles away in the league, and we do well in the Champions League, as long as we make sure we're back in that competition the following season, I think that's going to be a decent enough season for the new coach. If you can win some silverware, brilliant. But the expectation does need to be somewhat realistic because there's going to be a lot of change at the club behind the scenes. So we need to be competitive, is what I tried to say. Um, second part of your question was... Where's the second part of your question? Sorry, I'm just forgetting the second part of your question. Uh, and the Amram news. So the Amram news was basically that Barcelona are interested as well. Barcelona, before Liverpool's interest ramped up, were seen as the favourites, according to Miguel Delaney. But now... Um, now Liverpool are pushing ahead to try and, and get it done. So Miguel Delaney said, Barcelona are rushing to secure the services of Ruben Amaram. The Alonso decision has changed the market and Amaram is currently a top target for a number of clubs. Barcelona had been the favourites, but nothing is agreed yet. So that's the latest on Ruben Amaram. What are your thoughts on Haaland this season? Besides the finishing, do you think he's bang average? So, yeah, look, I wouldn't go as far as Roy Keane in saying that League 2 standard or League 1 standard. Um, but I do think it's fair to ask, is he the complete striker? Because he was invisible again against Arsenal. Invisible in many, many big games for Manchester City. And whilst he does score a lot of goals, it does feel like there's a lot more he could add to his game. So... What would I say on him? I feel comfortable saying I don't think he'll be at City in the next two seasons. I think he'll be gone. Um, and I wonder, does anybody else get the feeling that maybe him and Guardiola are starting to disagree on certain things? Or maybe that relationship isn't as good as as it once was maybe i'm reading too much into that i don't know maybe there's a man city fan that will have far more information on it but um i'm not going to say he's not a good striker he is but he's not he's not anywhere near the levels of the real greats he's a long way to go to get to that in my opinion but when he scores the amount of goals he does you know you do have to pay him his respects uh tyler morton's going to be great late bloomer though so casper's photography well, he's having a good season on loan with Hull. I think he assisted Fabio Carvalho's goal for Hull the other night. Um, but honestly, I don't know if he will make it at Liverpool or not. It's not for me to say. Um, truth is, I really just don't know the answer. If you're Amorum, who are three players you would sign for us? Well, I bring in one of my centre-backs. So if I'm Amorum, I'm bringing in one of the guys from, from Lisbon. One, because it's a position we need. And two, because, you know, he's somebody I'd know so let's say Inacio for want of it because I think there's going to be more of a clamor for Diamande and I think he might go for uh, a higher fee I certainly know he's a higher release clause than Inacio so let's say Inacio um who else would I look to bring in a number 10 probably whether that's look dream world for me I'd go after Musiala I can't see Bayern selling him but in a heartbeat I'd go after Jamal Musiala um and then I don't know if people disagree with me on this, but I think we could look at the left side of defence. Not because I think Robbo's finished, but because I think we need to start really looking for who will be the next Andy Robertson. Because I don't think it's going to be Costas, but it could be Luke Chambers. So, do you know what question I've been asking myself, Jack, over the last two days? What to do with Kelleher? That's the thing I'm really struggling on. Because in one sense... Alison Becker is my favourite player. I think he's the greatest goalkeeper in the world. But in another sense, I've been really impressed with what I've seen from Creevy and Kelleher. He has youth on his side. It's so tough, man. Best case scenario, if you sell him, is I hope we put in a buyback clause. Because, you know, whenever Alison moves on, I think it'd be great if we could bring Creevy back. But I'm also starting to get... And I don't, maybe I'm irrational here, but I'm starting to get a little bit concerned that Alisson 
seems to be picking up a few more muscle injuries as the years go by. Um, and this one has kept him out for a good prolonged spell, not just a few weeks. So, yeah, that that's a situation that I'm truly on the fence with because the greedy answer is keep them both, right? But trying to convince Creepy and Kelleher that he shouldn't go be a number one somewhere, that he should stay at Liverpool to be a backup. I think it's difficult after he's excelled as much as he has since Alisson's been out. You know, if you're representing him as an example, you're telling him he's got to become a number one. He's 25 years of age. Time to go out there and, and carve a path for yourself. And if you're Liverpool, you don't want to lose him because you're not going to get a better number two, are you? You're not going to get somebody that can come in and be as consistent as he has. So, yeah, I'm glad this isn't a decision that I have to make because truly I feel like it's, it's difficult. Um, what what do you guys think? Though? What would you do if you were Liverpool now with Cuevie and Kelleher? Uh, Kelleher may suffer like Dean Henderson. I think that's probably a good example, Jensk. Yeah, I think that's probably fair. Um, Henderson never really got that chance at United to establish himself as a number one. But uh, when he went out on loan at Sheffield United previously in that he was top notch. So I think it's probably a decent comparison. I, I think United probably handled that wrong. And I wouldn't like to see Liverpool do the same thing. Uh, LFC Love said, yes, Kelleher should definitely have a buyback clause. Kelleher, you ideally loan him to a strong club for one or two years and bring him back. If sold, have a buyback clause. So from an accounting or a financial perspective... Selling them would make more sense um, and having a buyback clause. Because one, you're bringing in some money to help improve cash flow. And <coughs> excuse me, and two, obviously having a buyback clause means that you have first refusal or you have a set fee that you could bring them back for. Um, as you've said, it will also allow them a couple of years to go develop. Um, here's a question. Is there anybody who would consider cashing in on Alison? Now, I wouldn't, and I'm not trying to push that narrative, but I've seen it mentioned by a couple of pundits that maybe 60, 65 million quid for Alison Becker, you know, and bring Cuevin Kelleher through. You know, it's been suggested, and I'm not there. I want them both because I'm greedy, but it's... Yeah, this is tough. The, the Kelleher situation is tough because I don't think we're going to bring through a number two that's going to be as good as him. Or we're going to find somebody to come in that's going to be as consistent as him if we need someone to step up if Alisson's injured. Uh, which players can you imagine leaving the club in the summer? Oh, Phillips, Williams, Morton. Salah. And probably some loans for the likes. Maybe Jaden Dans goes out on loan. Maybe Ben Doak, depending on what happens there. I mean, he's going to have to start getting more game time. Um, I think Salah might be the biggest exit in the summer. But I don't really expect many more after that. Unless somebody comes out of the woodwork and said they'd like to be sold. So I've got to hold my hands up on something about Cody Gakpo, actually. And I guess it's a little bit embarrassing to say. But I've always tried to be honest with you. A lot of the time over the past few weeks, you've heard me say, I'm not at the point where I'd look to move on Cody Gakpo yet. And part of the reasoning behind that was his age. I thought Cody Gakpo was only 22 or 23. I didn't realise he was going to be 25 this summer. That does somewhat change my perspective a little bit. Certainly from the point of view as I don't think he has enough time left to continue not developing. I definitely would want to see something by the winter transfer window in the next season. Um, but as I said, I've been putting my hands up on that. I, I thought he was younger. I thought he was like 22, 23. When it was pointed out to me that he was going to be 25, I thought, mm, maybe I'm giving him a little bit too much leeway there. Um, but yeah, that's you know just my own honest opinion on that one. Uh, Alex Alvarado, thank you, dude, for your very kind super chat. I really appreciate it. Said, sorry if you've already gone over this, but what's going on with the sporting manager and uh, who the 
who TF do Barca think they are? Only an idiot will go to Barca over Liverpool. Well, I love that you've said that, Alex, and I agree with you. Um, I think the case was that Liverpool and the world thought we were going to look at Alonso. He was the number one choice. Barca knew that Alonso wasn't really going to be an option for them. So they probably had Amram in their sights as soon as um, Xavi Hernandez announced that he was departing. So maybe we're a little bit late to the party for Amarim and we're playing catch up somewhat. Uh, I agree with you that Liverpool should be a far more attractive proposition, but we would say that as Liverpool fans. Um, Yeah, that's it. That's as much as I know at the minute. Let's have a look at the poll that we put up earlier. We asked you guys, does Fabio Carvalho still have a career at Liverpool Football Club? 64%, now up to 65%, have said yes, he does. And 35% said no, he doesn't. Um, I think I agree. I think I'd be in that 65%. Now, I don't think it's nailed on that he's going to be a success. But I do think the chances of him getting another look in have increased with Jurgen Klopp departing in the summer. I think that will play to his favour. Certainly, I believe he'll be assessed over the uh, the pre-season um, before a decision's made. Uh, John Power said, I've warmed up to Gakpo. Um, I don't think he fits in. He's not quick enough. So, I try to look at it like this. I think of him as the fifth choice of five attackers. And in that context, I'm absolutely fine with him being at the club. Because it's not like any of us would realistically have him in our preferred front three. Or at least, I don't want to speak for everybody, of course. But I certainly feel like the majority of us would have some variation of Salah, Diaz, Darwin. Or Salah, Darwin, Jota as our favourite front three. So... If Cody Gakpo is a utility player, a squad player, a rotational player, I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, I think that's the easiest way I can sum, sum it up. Uh, did anyone see that one of the Barcelona coaches looks like Klopp? No, I haven't. But they they did look... Uh, do you remember the nonsense coming out of Barcelona that they thought they could get Jurgen Klopp for, the, for next season? That made me laugh. Craig, if Amaram chooses to go to Barcelona, would you consider? Excuse me, would you consider Xavi Hernandez for Liverpool? No, no, I wouldn't. Um, I think if not, if Amaram doesn't get the Liverpool job, I probably would agree with what somebody suggested earlier that Nagelsmann would would then, in my mind, probably be the best fit. But I can't lie. I still have concerns over Nagelsmann. I'd feel far more confident with Alonso or Amaram than I would with Nagelsmann. But I can't deny Nagelsmann does have something about him. You know, he is a talented young coach. And he's already at international level management now as well. So I finished up at St. James's Park. Thank you, Mark. Newcastle United won. Everton won. Decent point that for the Toffees. Fair play. Um yeah, Newcastle, after that epic comeback against West Ham, didn't back it up. And that's that's what often is the case with clubs who you know have had that season, get into the Champions League, and now it's a bit up and down. Um, yeah, I'm, I wonder what next season looks like for Newcastle and what the plans are going to be there because I think they're going to have to sell a player or two to fund more, more purchases of uh, players who Eddie Howe can kick on to the next level. Steve Clark is miles better than Nagelsmann. Look, I like Steve Clark. Um, obviously, he was their assistant coach before. Worked at Chelsea. Obviously, doing a cracking job with the Scottish national team. But I don't think he'll be in consideration for the Liverpool job, mate. But I do I do like him. He comes across as a very straightforward, um, good footballing man as well. Uh, are Klopp and Nagelsmann friends? Don't know. Honestly, I've no idea. Um, yeah, haven't got a clue. Jose in no, no. But Amarum, Amarum, 
look, I know there's been talked about Village Bowes and all before, but I do think Amram is the next big coach to come out of Portugal, the Mourinho-esque. Although he hasn't achieved what Jose did, which was, of course, winning the Champions League with, with that Porto team, which was an amazing team. And I think Jose Mourinho spoke previously about this, and he said one of the biggest things that they were able to do that helped them succeed was to keep that Porto team together for as long as they did. That allowed them to... to create those bonds and that consistency to go and win that Champions League. Uh, I think Carlo takes the Brazil job after the Copa America and Alonso takes the Madrid job. So, like yourself, Darwizzi, I've heard lots of chatter about the idea of Carlo Ancelotti taking over the Brazil job. Um, I actually thought he may have taken it over in the summer. But after... Now, I don't know what happens, mate. Um, but I don't disagree with you that we may well see Alonso at, at Madrid. But Alonso has to back it up next season. You know, if he doesn't deliver with Leverkusen to somewhat near the same extent as this season, I don't know if he'll be looked at as favourably. Probably, but, you know, his stock is very, 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 very high right now. Um, and it's, it's somewhat of a, a calculated risk staying at Leverkusen. Uh, Wufu Blam Blam, what a name. Said, so, Craig, do you think we still get Amarum? All the signs point to confidence from the Liverpool side. A lot of journalists, whilst some people have said it's done, I definitely don't have that information. Um, do I think we get him? Really, I don't know. I hope so, but I feel I feel we all became a little bit... Not all of us, sorry. That's me being unfair again. I feel many of us, definitely me included, felt like Alonso was almost a given, you know? And that humbled me somewhat, that Alonso chose to remain at Leverkusen and turn down Liverpool, Bayern. So I don't want to be as arrogant around Ruben Amorim. Um but I certainly feel like right now, yeah, it's it's looking quite possible. What are your thoughts on Gordon's penalties? Gordon's? Again, you're going to have to rewind that back. Am I missing something here? What are your thoughts on Gordon's penalties? That's gone over my head, dude. Sorry, I'm, I'm maybe missing something very obvious there, but... Oh, the Newcastle match. I didn't watch it tonight, if that's what you're talking about. Sorry. No. Um, I seen Cole Palmer score a Penenka the other day, which was a delicious penalty. But I didn't watch the Newcastle game, so I've no idea what, what way he took the penalties. Did he score, miss? I've no idea. Right, so, two quick things on the shows. Belfast. We're going to announce the de the details for the tickets this week for that. They will be on sale on Ticketmaster. Dublin, we're going to do two days after Belfast. So, we're going to do Belfast May 31st. And then we're going to be in Dublin on June the 2nd. And both of those shows should be going on sale soon. The other shows... I can confirm the venues for you now because we've booked them in today. The Cardiff show will be on August the 2nd and it will be at the Richard Burton Theatre, which is absolutely amazing. Like, if you're thinking of coming to a show and you're near Cardiff, that's the one. Come to Cardiff. We are going to put on our biggest, best, most high-end show yet in Cardiff. In Liverpool, two days after Cardiff, August the 4th, we're going to be at the Hot Water Comedy Club in Liverpool City Centre. Um, and we will have details on those tickets in the future. But two shows coming up closest, Belfast and Dublin. And then in August, at the start of August, we're going to be in Cardiff and Liverpool. Uh, the discussions with Amarin were positive according in Portugal. It's almost a done deal. Brilliant. That's good news. Um I certainly hope that that information is correct. A little bit on Rodrigo here, actually. A couple of uh, links for us to or to Real Madrid's Rodrigo over the last few days. 
But just one thing I want to remind you of. Uh, he did sign a new contract last season in Real Madrid that keeps him there till 2028. And he has a bio clause of €1 billion Euro or £860 million pound, um, that will keep him at Real Madrid. Sorry, Real Madrid till 28 and a €1 billion Euro release clause. Now, nobody is going to be expected to pay that release clause if Real Madrid decides to cash in on Rodrigo. But I don't know. I don't dislike the idea of us being linked to him, but I would imagine he will be out of our budget. Um, yeah, I'd love him. I like Rodrigo, but if Real Madrid do sell, God knows how much money they're going to ask for. JC said, bigger than the Boston show. Oh, mate, yes. Inf like, look at the venue in Cardiff. It's cost us more than twice as much as any other show to put on Cardiff. We are going big for Cardiff. It's, uh, it is an epic, epic venue. What do you think of Omar Marmouche? So, I'm going to need your help here, Sultan uh, Martin. Martin, is he the Egyptian? So I had seen the other day that Liverpool were linked to one of Salah's teammates. I just don't know if my memory is correct, if it was Omar Marmouche, but there was a link there to Liverpool signing an Egyptian player during the week. I just, uh, I don't know much about him. Uh, Kerry said Liverpool for me. Perfect, we hope to see you there. All the shows, will, we will have a musical accompany with, with us. So we're going to be having a musical act who's going to be singing all the hits, all the Liverpool songs. Then we're, if you want to know what the shows are going to look like, we're going to have a musical act doing 45 minutes to an hour to start us off. Then myself and Connor will come on the stage. We'll do about 90 minutes. And then we'll finish up with 15 minutes of a sing song and send you all out into the night, hopefully pumped and uh, full of... Adrenaline. That's that's the idea behind the show. So yeah, if you're thinking, if if I could pick one, it'll be Cardiff. If I were you, but Liverpool will be fun as well. I've always wanted to play in the Hot Water Comedy Club. I think it's a great venue, and um, yeah, looking forward to it. I can't go to the Liverpool show because I'm on my honeymoon. Nice, well in Rachel. I mean. Of all the excuses we may get, my friend, for people not coming, I think being on your honeymoon is one that's absolutely top of the list. So well played. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful honeymoon. Omar Mamouche is a great player. I'm Egyptian, so watch him the international break. He has great potential. I think somebody else said he is a Frankfurt striker. Was that right? Yeah, a Frankfurt striker. Um, I don't know much about him other than the link that I'd seen during the week. So, you know, I'm... Hoping that you guys can fill me in a little bit more on uh, Omar. Uh, somebody here already said that he's a great player. So there we go. Will Kanye be playing music? I can't quite afford Kanye. He's not quite in my budget. Um, we nearly have the act confirmed for the Liverpool show. We nearly have that one confirmed. We're just waiting for a couple of little bits and pieces. If anybody has any suggestions, by the way, for the Cardiff show... If you know somebody who's a singer-songwriter, Liverpool fan, knows all the songs, you think would be a good fit to come along and join us, please do let me know. Obviously, I'm Irish, so over here for the shows in Ireland, it'd be easier for me to sort somebody. But if you have any suggestions, we are all ears. Will Craig DJ at the shows? No. No, mate, no. Because I'm already going to be nervous enough doing the talking. You know, it's a huge difference between doing this stream and doing a live show. It makes me very, very nervous to do a live show. <coughs> so, yeah, it takes a lot of prep for me to be able to walk out on stage. I'm a bag of nerves when I do it. Jamie Webster doesn't... Uh, Jamie Webster is stepped away from the Liverpool scene. He doesn't want to... At, at, at least this is what I remember saying. Jamie Webster, uh, he didn't want to be... I think he just wants to concentrate on his own music at the moment. So I believe he stepped away from the Boss Night gigs as well. So yes, as much as we love Mr. Webster, I don't think that's going to be possible. Uh, Kean said, Craig, I may consider coming to the Cardiff show. Uh, only goes, I'll only live in 
Pontendal. So I'll probably take a train or bus. Sorry, I haven't been in the chat. Uh, I've had a shock. Well, I hope you're okay. Keen, most importantly, dude. And um, if you can come to the Cardiff show, it would be absolutely awesome. It's at the Richard Burton Theatre. I'm sure you probably know where that is. Uh, 21 goal contributions in 34 matches for Omar. Pretty good. I mean, yeah. N nothing too shabby about that. 24 contributions. For jump. Yeah, nothing too bad there. But, honestly, do we need a striker? Like, that's that That was my first thought when you mentioned he was a striker, is do we need one? You know, we've got Darwin. We've got Jota. We've got Dan's coming through. Gakpo. I don't know if we need another striker. But, maybe the new manager comes in with a different idea to what he'd like the striker to look like in his system. Uh, Sultan said, Craig, by Cecic or Mainu? I think by Cecic. I think by Cecic too, but I do rate Kobe Mainu very, very highly. I think he's getting overhyped because he's coming through as a Manchester United prospect and the media do love United, but he is a great player. But I love Stefan. It's been really unfortunate. One of my biggest disappointments of this season has been that we haven't uh, we haven't got to see Stefan develop, obviously, because he's been out for most of the season. Um, people are saying, is it the City Centre venue or the Albert Dock one for Liverpool? Honestly, I'm not sure which address it is, but it is going to be the one that is being developed, redeveloped. They're redoing it right now. Again, before the tickets go on sale for Liverpool and Cardiff, I'll have all that information for you. Um, we're not going to start selling those two shows till probably May. But the Dublin and Belfast one are going to go on sale hopefully this week. Do I support a team in Ireland? Um, I wouldn't say support because, as I've said, I think that's unfair to real supporters of these clubs. But I would always have a fondness for Shelburne. Uh, apparently Amram doesn't settle for lesser targets and would rather spend more for his first choice e.g. Bellingham last season uh, I don't know if that's the case or not because obviously he doesn't have a huge budget, budget Excuse me, at, um, at Sporting compared to Benfica, Porto so I really don't know you know I don't know what his preference would be there on targets, you know, if he would be like Klopp in that he'd have a list and he wants his number one and he'd be willing to wait. Don't know. Um, I mean, he got Guy Ocarez or whoever you pronounce that striker's name into Sporting Lisbon, which was a good get. A lot of clubs were in for him when he was at Coventry and he's worked wonders in that system. I mean, every time I check up on Sporting's games, he seems to be on the score sheet. Uh, just think of the United team for Sunday. Nobody fit. Good. Fuck him. Why hammer? Um, yeah, good. Hopefully. Hopefully we put them to the sword again. I feel like we should be up for this game because, let's be honest, we let them rob us in the last game of the FA Cup. And by that I mean not that they did that wrong. United won the game fair and square, but we should have killed that game off. That game should have never even been close. So... That was the frustrating draw we had at Anfield this season. I feel like we've got to go to Old Trafford and remind them that we are a better team and show it. It's easy for me here to say this, but we've got to go and show it. Uh, Kevin, King Gory, absolute legend, mate, for the super sticker. Thank you. Uh, you guys are the best. Thank you, uh, M8 Dog. Appreciate you, mate. Uh, Craig, what about Max Boyce for Cardiff? I, I don't know who he is, but I will try and research because I definitely do need somebody for Cardiff. So, yeah, I will have a look and see if I can find out. So, some a lot of people have been asking me about Alice, the Manchester United fan. Um, a lot of people have been suggesting that we try and get in contact with Alice with regards to top of the league. So, I don't have contact details for Alice. But what I would say is... If you guys uh, are fans of Alice's content and watch Alice's content, um, we'd love to have a chat with Alice. I think Alice is a great content creator. And if she had time in her schedule to come on to top of the league next year and give us another perspective, maybe a united voice on it, or uh, certainly to be part of the team at top of the league, we, we open welcome her with open arms. She's a great content creator. So if you guys are in a chat or anything, yeah, just let her know, you know. Um, 
and hopefully we can connect and hopefully we can uh, we can sort something out because the few videos I've seen of Alice is really, really good. Um, really good on camera, really personable and certainly very knowledgeable in all things football related. So, yeah, sounds like a good fit for me. Um, I don't know the girl, but, you know, from watching what she's done and hearing how highly people speak of her, Sounds like the exact type of person we'd like to have involved with top of the league next year when we when we relaunch it with a full team. Only one fit centre back, Lord Maguire. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it, White Hammer? But he is the world's most expensive defender, mate, so you know, they can, you know, have some comfort in that. That if you only have one defender available, it might as well be the most expensive one in world football. Uh, Alice is insightful and honest as you, Craig. I'll let her know. Thank you, Coach Bill. And as I said, um, somebody suggest Paul, actually, if you're watching Paul, thank you. Paul suggested to me recently that I watch Alice's video on Ruben Amaram, and I did, and I found it really good. I found it very insightful. Uh, and, yeah, the more I've learned about Alice, the more I've, I've become to uh, be aware that she's really good and very well liked and very knowledgeable and like somebody else said a bit like myself down to earth so yeah brilliant and if nothing else do check out her channel and her content because you know we've a lot of great content creators out there and alice is certainly one of them craig did we dodge a bullet with Gvardiol? so i'm gonna say no because I don't think he's been played in a position that he would automatically assume would be his best one at Manchester City on the left side of their defence and the way Guardiola is utilising them. Um, if he came to Liverpool, I feel like he would have had a more familiarity with the role he was being asked to play. Um, but, you know, taking that into consideration, have, would I say that his season at Manchester City has been a huge success? No. I, would, I wouldn't say it's been a failure, but I would say it was uh, a little bit underwhelming for the price tag. Do you still think we get Amaram? Certainly hope so. Uh, signs are certainly looking positive, but we do have to we do have to be mindful of Barcelona's interest as well. A lot to talk today, though, about De Zerbi going further and further down the priority list for Liverpool. It certainly feels like De Zerbi is, a, is not somebody we're currently really given much consideration to, based off what a lot of the journalists are saying. I'm just trying to read through to make sure there's nothing else I missed. Um, who is this one? So Sky Sports News said, Roberto De Zerbi is not being considered among the leading candidates for the Liverpool job. The Reds have turned their attention elsewhere. Uh, that was backed up by Jason Burt of The Telegraph, who said um, Liverpool have cooled their interest in Brighton manager Roberto De Zerbi. I'm um, just trying to make sure that I haven't missed anything else. So we spoke a little bit earlier on about Kieran McKenna. Um, Darren McAnthony, uh, Peter United chairman, uh, friend of the channel here as well, actually. Shout out to Dara. Always enjoy my conversations with Mr. McAnthony. Uh, he tipped Kieran McKenna as somebody who could definitely do a job in the future at a top six club and suggest that he maybe he's a dark horse to replace Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool. Now, I should point out something. Dara McAnthony has been spot on about a lot of stuff over the years. I remember when we spoke to Dara McAnthony a couple of years ago. He was really championing Ivan Tony at that time and Ollie Watkins, whom he had both of them at Peterborough. And he was talking about Liverpool looking to bring in one of these two lads. And at the time, we, I kind of was a bit snobby. I've got to be honest, I was a bit snobby and I thought, hmm, bit of a big step up there. But look what they've both gone on to do. You know, Ollie Watkins being part of the uh, great season Aston Villa have had this year. Ivan Tony, you know, his record has spoke for itself, how good he's been in the Premier League. So when he said keep an eye on Kieran McKenna, I think we should definitely keep an eye on Kieran McKenna. Doing a great job with Ipswich. Um, I've seen him linked more strongly with the Manchester United job, if I'm being honest with you. But yeah, Darren McAnthony certainly does have his finger on the pulse of uh, a lot of up-and-coming talent. And he's a really nice guy, fellow Irishman as well, and a Liverpool fan. 
what does a membership do so membership gives you access to a couple of things namely the custom emojis that we have on the channel that are for members only it gives you access to member only polls and stuff it also highlights your name in green and you get the anfield agenda logo beside your name if you have an anfield agenda ultra membership you will get access to our discord group but don't forget every thursday now we're going to pick five people and we're going to give a thank you thursday where we're going to give five people every week access to our discord group five people who we think have been really uh, great members of our community who maybe haven't got a membership or for any various reason can't afford a membership we want to make sure that we continue to try and reward you guys for how brilliant you are in our community and how helpful you are to each other so every thursday we're going to make sure five people get a link to our discord group as a little thank you for being as amazing as you guys are do you think amram will prefer liverpool over barca uh, said elder serik or cherik again apologies if i mispronounce her i'd say yes but i'm a liverpool fan so obviously i look at everything through very biased liverpool eyes I can't speak for Ruben Amaran, but if you look at it without any emotion attached to it, I would say right now the Liverpool job's a more attractive job. Uh, more stability at the club, certainly finances are in better shape, um, a really good squad with good young players coming through. Now look, La Masia always produces good players as well. Um, but I don't know. You know, Maybe Ruben Amaran is in love with the idea of staying in a similar culture and a similar, you know, similar weather. Sim I don't know. I hope that he likes the idea of the Liverpool job. Certainly a lot of the journalist murmurings have been that he's been fairly um, encouraging and given encouraging signs towards Liverpool. Uh, opinion request from you in the chat. Oh, I love that. Yes, always happy to give an opinion. Uh, said the Facebook Network. Thank you for your super chat, sir. Said, buying my first jersey before the end of the season. Whose shirt from this season should I buy? Belter question. I'm going to say Alexis McAllister. And maybe that's just because if I was going to buy a Liverpool shirt or a signed Liverpool shirt at the minute, Alexis McAllister would probably be at the top of my list. So my vote, the Facebook Network, would be for Alexis McAllister. But I'm sure the chat will uh, will give you some suggestions as well. What's all the minimum ages for the real life shows? So it depends on which venues. I don't know for the Dublin and Belfast show yet. Uh, but I can say without any hesitation. Cardiff and Liverpool will be all ages events. Uh, now I may put in a 14 year and above minimum. But I'm almost certain Cardiff and Liverpool will be an all ages event. So yeah open to everybody um dublin and belfast i don't know the answer to that just yet i will know in the next day or two but the other two i know for a fact they'll be all ages events uh guys have you voted for liverpool's player of the month for march there you go coach bill making you uh go and vote and do always good to have an input on these things the Japanese Samurai said Gumi. Gumi voting for a Toro Endo shirt. Uh, ben Ben Moles going for Alexis Orendo. Uh, Marco's going for Salah. Toes wants Darwizzi. Jensk Garnacho. Come on now, Jensk. Wrong club, bud. Wrong club. Craig, who do you want for right wing? I think Bakayoko. Uh, I don't know we're going to have a winger next year, mate. Amram's system doesn't really utilise wingers as much as it does wing backs and number 10s that can join up with the attacker. So... I don't know if we're going to look at any wingers. Um, that's what makes it all the more intriguing coming into this summer. What are your thoughts on Haaland's overall game? So somebody asked me this earlier on. It sounds really wrong to say if you take away his goals, he's bang average. Because he scores a very, very high amount of goals. But I do think there's something to it. You know... If he doesn't, the best way I can probably describe it to you is if Haaland doesn't score in a game of football, I don't think he does much else. Maybe a little bit defensively, uh, aerially to defend corners or set pieces, but his skill level is not great. Um, and I feel like people are going to feel like I'm just taking a cheap shot, but I wouldn't go as far as Roy Keane. But I would say that if you take away his goal scoring or if he doesn't score in a game, he does nothing. You know, look at the game against Arsenal. Nothing. Um, look at the cup finals. Nothing. I, I, 
I wouldn't want them at Liverpool. Because I don't think it would work the way we play football. But you put that ball into the penalty area and get him on the end of it, he's going to score you a ton of goals. So in the right systems, with the right coaches, he'll score a lot of goals. But I do feel he's a bit of a flat track bully. you know. And I think he needs to step up and start delivering in the bigger moments, in the bigger games. And I've no doubt he'll probably add that to his game as he gets older because he is still very young. Uh, narrowed down to Maka and Endo. Thanks everyone, said the Facebook network. Two great shouts. Two great choices. So what do you guys think of Haaland? You know, you know, I've given you my opinion, but I'd genuinely love to know what you think of Erling Braut Haaland. Have I missed the talk on Amram and Barca? Uh, yes, but I'm happy to go back through it for you, mate. One second. Uh, Jonathan, let me just get the notes here for you, bud. Right, so, a couple of things on Amaram. Firstly, he has two release clauses. I haven't mentioned this yet on tonight's stream, so thankfully you've reminded me, Jonathan, I can give you that information. So, Ruben Amaram has two release clauses. A 30 million quid release clause for Portuguese clubs and a 20 million release clause for, cl for, clause for clubs outside of Portugal. But, it's believed that Liverpool would have to pay about 15 million if we were to go and get the, the coach. So, that tallies with what I've said at about 17 million euro being the number that I was uh, led to believe would be enough to get Ruben Amram out of sporting. But there is more stuff. Miguel Delaney has posted. Miguel Delaney, again, somebody who I would hold in the highest regard as a journalist, said, Barcelona now racing to secure Ruben Amram. Alonso's decision has changed the market. Amram, a top choice for a number of clubs. Barca had been favourites, but nothing yet agreed. Nagelsmann being given greater consideration. Um, I don't know if Miguel means Barcelona are giving Nagelsmann greater consideration or Liverpool. Um, that much uh, maybe I've misinterpreted and you guys can help me out on. Another bit on Ruben Amram came in uh, again from Miguel Delaney who said... The Alonso decision changed the market. Barcelona had been favourites, but nothing is yet agreed with Ruben Amaram. Uh, I think that is about it. And again, just a reminder before we finish up that today is World Autism Awareness Day, as you can see from the uh, logo we have at the bottom of the screen. And earlier on, we tried to elaborate by saying, why do we celebrate World Autism Day? World Autism Awareness is a time to come together to promote understanding, acceptance and inclusion by recognising the diversity of autism and embracing the strengths and abilities of individuals on the spectrum, we can create a more compassionate and supportive world for everyone. Now, I'm reading that off the website because obviously I couldn't have composed something as poignant as that, but it does strike all the right notes. And today is a day where I hope that we can all try to learn something um, about the autism spectrum and you know how we can perhaps make the world a little bit more autism friendly on occasion. Uh, my son is autistic. Thank you, Craig. I mean, look, it, it's my pleasure. You know, my own my own son is autistic. I'm on the autism spectrum. I've said this to you guys before. I have Asperger's. Um, and I'm so proud to see that more and more people are becoming more autism aware um, and understanding that no two people on the autism spectrum are the same. It is called a spectrum for a reason. And uh, the thing that gets me is I've, I've real issues with hearing um sen sensitivity um if i'm in a pub let's say or a restaurant my wife's talking and people around us at tables are talking i can't differentiate i just hear it all as one noise and it just becomes muddled in my head and i get frustrated so that's one of my sensory issues my son has similar ones my son also has certain types of clothes that he can't wear because the fabrics on his skin just don't feel nice i've often said to you guys as well look right here I don't wear t-shirts underneath my hoodies or anything because I, they make me feel too restricted. So that's another th little foible of mine. Uh, Sammy said, I'm on the spectrum as well. Thanks, Craig. Look, I think if anybody ever has the pleasure of getting to know somebody on the spectrum, what you'll find is somebody with incredible passion, understanding, beautiful, kind soul, um, Maybe I'm just speaking about my own son here, but I learn something every day from my young man. He reminds me what's important. He reminds me what's really... Sorry. He just reminds me that I, 
I need to be a better person for him. I need to make the world a better environment for him. It just makes me happy, he makes me smile, and he educates me every day. Reminds me that I don't shouldn't be stressing about the little things in life, that there are bigger problems to worry about. And just takes everything in his stride. And uh, I'm tremendously proud of the young man he's becoming. And, um, and I've no doubt that any of you guys out there who have somebody in your family who's on the spectrum will feel similarly. They're the... The kids that I've encountered over the years that are on the autism spectrum are some of the most fun, uh, kind, caring, sensitive young people you could ever look to meet. And uh, I think it's also great that employers these days are, are noticing these positive traits in people on the spectrum and um, seeing what a great asset a lot of these people can become to businesses, to uh, environments, to associations. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's the world's certainly becoming more autism friendly and it's great to see. Right, my friends, I'm going to say goodnight to you. Uh, I'm going to go grab myself a shower, but I will see you tomorrow. I'm not sure if I'll be live at four o'clock or not. I don't want to say I will and then not come on because I'm a little bit under the weather at the minute and uh, I had to take a load of medicine today to be able to stream tonight because my nose and throat are not great. So I'm, I'm not going to lie and say I'll be on tomorrow. I don't know, but I will be on a half eight and I hope to see you then and we'll have a video out at six o'clock as well. So much love. Thank you for dropping in tonight. Hope to see you at one of the live shows in Belfast, Dublin, Cardiff or Liverpool. And uh, yeah, Thursday, watch along. We'll be starting at half six and fingers crossed we get the three points. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Much love to you all and I'll catch up with you soon.